connected by purple ears. Next, we have an introduction to the FTC library, where the purple gears will show us how easy it is um, to use the parts library that their team has been working on for several years. If you'd like to introduce um, everybody, John, that would be great. Tom Green. Um, Tom. I will be talking initially about the parts library. I'm going to share a screen here. So, our team, FTC Team 2901 Purple Gears, has built a parts library made to streamline the on-chip process. What we've done is we've gone through a bunch of different vendors, like Pitsco, Rev, and we've taken their parts from their websites, we've uploaded the CAD to OnShape, and then we've gone through and cleaned it up. So all of these parts are standardized. What that means is we've gone through and we made sure all of them stand up to a standard. So for, for example, if I go into Pitsco, um, and look at a, uh, a Tetrix Max channel, it, it will, just like all of the other parts that have been made public, will have, in the properties, it'll have a part number and a vendor label. So part number, vendor, it'll have material and appearance. So you can see, oh, we haven't chosen a configuration yet. So you see, you can see when we open the appearance, it has a specific appearance that actually matches the part. So you, you don't end up with green channels and purple screws. Um, but this is common to pretty much all of our parts. And that means you have a reliable and consistent source for your FTC parts. You don't have to, you don't have to import new CADs if they're already in the onship library. So for example, uh, Tetrix Max channels, you can have them ready to go here with like consistent, they have the fillets and everything, and they're actually configurable. Um, so it just means that you don't have to worry about, you know, do I have this part in the on on shape because it's most likely in the library. And we have thousands of parts and hundreds of users. So it's not a small thing. The way you can get access to this is if you email first at ptc.com, they will give you guys access to the library. We have a bunch of different vendors and it's actually organized really well. So if you go in, for example, Rev Robotics, you can see we've organized it by kits, structure motion, and then it's even organized past that. This is common to most all of our vendors. Yeah, I will pass it on to one of my teammates. Hi, I'm Brett. So I, let me share my screen first. That might be a bit helpful. Um, I will be showing you how to insert these parts into, uh, into Onshape. So first thing you're gonna do, go up to insert, hit insert. Go over to other documents, and if you have done what Tom said and joined the parts library, you should see a thing here called, um, mine's a little different because I'm part of the team, but yours should have something around this icon called the uh, FTC parts library, I think it's, I believe that it's the name. Oh, robotics parts users, all right, thank you. And then from there, you can search a couple different methods. methods. Um, all these things, so let's say you wanted to go to Pitsco, right? If you go into Pitsco, you could see that Pitsco is a lot like, all right, um, it's a lot like, we, how we have it set up is each folder is set up just like the, um, the front pages of their websites, right? So you can go in and you can go, all right, do you want something from structure? Click structure, then let's say you only know the name. And so you go down here, you say Tetrix Max. Cool, click on it, it's configurable. You have a whole bunch of different things. You can uh, insert a 17 inch part or a 17 hole part. If it'll load, you should be able to insert it in. And then let's say, all right, I also need a five hole part. Click on it insert it in, press check, it's there. You can do whatever you want with it past there. Then let's say you only know part number. Let's say this rev part, right? You only know that right there. Oh, you only know that right there. Control C, go back over here, hit there, Control V. Enter, oh, or just, 
hit the magnifying glass, I think that's what that is. And then first one, rev part, click, enter, click again. There is your part. Um, you can also just browse, go through them, because they're all set up in like folders upon folders upon folders. Like I showed you a little bit earlier, let's go to uh, Rev, right? Let's say you want a, uh, I don't know, a motor from Rev or a servo or something. Oh, go into motion, go into rotary motion. Then let's say you want uh, gears, I guess, right? Then you can go and pick any gear that you would like and insert it in. That's about all for me. So I'll hand it off to the next. So hello, um, my name is Ben. I'm one of the other modelers on the team. And I'm just kind of showing, gonna show you what some of these parts look like in a finished model. So this is a model that we have been working on. It's not completely done, but it's um, kind of the push bot from last year. And as you can see, um, a lot of these parts you can turn into an actual robot fairly quickly. Um, and then the biggest part that I wanted to show you was this part about animations where you can then use these parts from the library to make motion as you would in real life. So this is straight in on shape. I've animated one of the Revolute mates that we have in um, one of the motors and it spins the wheel and everything else just like it would in real life. So um, I think that's about it. It's uh, really easy to make uh, robots that look exactly like they would and they move like they would in real life. Thanks guys, that was great. Um, are the rock and roll robots or wizards.exe using the FTC parts library? Yeah we are using it extensively on our robots. Yeah, it's super useful. I use it all the time, especially the configurable parts. So it makes it a lot easier than downloading it from the website. Cool. What about uh, rock and roll robots? Are you guys using it? Or do you think you'll be using it now that you have seen it? Yeah, um, we've really downloaded a lot of vendor parts ourselves. And, uh, and made them adjustable and configurable. Uh, but if there's a library out there with everything in it already, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. It really is. Um, so you can see from the demonstrations that we've seen so far that Onshape and the FTC parts library and how to share and collaborate are really a great way to get started in CAD and to um, talk to your teammates remotely if necessary this season. Um, is anybody here using Onshape for their engineering notebook for like diagrams or using it in collaboration with uh, Google Docs? So I can kind of uh, speak on that behalf um, for Purple Gears at least. Um, we do use Google Docs for our engineering documentation and mainly we use Onshape to uh, like make drawings or we take like um, screenshots of our model to then put in our Google Doc. Cool. On Wizards, we do something very similar where we take screenshots, except we use Word for our engineering documentation right now. And what about rock and roll robots? Um, we do tend to use the drawing feature quite often. Last year, we definitely used it to make um, drawings of our full complete CAD of the robot and put it on posters for judging. And we also included it in the front page of our engineering notebook. Good to hear. So it sounds like if you guys have to do more stuff remotely, like engineering notebook, which will actually be an engineering portfolio this year and like a consolidated version of the notebook, um, that you guys really have the tools and resources to make that happen.